Auzu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Atiyullah, atiya rasul wa ulul amri minkum. And always a reminder for myself and abdukul ajeezu da'eefu, miskeenu, zalimu, jahal. And but for the grace of Allah that we are still in existence. And alhamdulillah in this blessed, blessed month of Rabbil Awwal and the blessed birth of Sayyidina Muhammad that Allah granted us to participate not from our cleverness it's a grant every good deed is a gift from Allah not a burden that somebody thinks oh they have to do it they have to contribute to it they have to participate with it it's a gift from Allah and those whom been honoured because Allah mentions in Holy Qur'an we allowed our name to be mentioned within their homes and we teach that that's everywhere within your heart is your home is your home the home the main idea is Allah allows the servant their worshipness allows them to pray and that's why we say in the azan la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah that there's no power and there's no might or when someone asked is there energy teachings in Islam the, the azan that we're calling the reply to the azan is la hawla wa la quwwata illa billahi aliyul azim that I have no help and no power except in Allah He allows me to pray so I don't pray because I'm clever he allows me to pay, He allows me to participate, He allows me to go to events, He allows me all of these worshipness when He wants to honour me. When He wants to dishonour me, He begins to stop that where I don't pray, I don't come to events, I don't participate, I don't anything, I have nothing in my involvement drops, 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 I even begin to hide because my involvement is not correct. Means all of these characteristics are a sign that Allah's not honouring you. These are not cleverness, oh I, I, got, I escaped that. But it's a sign that Allah is dishonouring the servant. When Allah wants to honour the servant, He brings them to where all the barakah and the blessings are and they participate in them. And that's a gift for them, their soul. As Salaamu Alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. As Salaamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. All their families and generations to dress upon the servant. Alhamdulillah that we talked with our people on the weekend who were visiting and an immensely important subject, so many times we go into deep realities. But the foundation of a reality of our human experience and the reason for a human experience means this way of tariqah and the true way of Islam is that for us to truly love Allah and have the character, the khuluq in which Allah will be happy. And everything is based on conditioning and our human example. So there are people that raised in homes that are abusive. They see their father as a dominant figure and the father beats everybody, their kids and other kids. They are raised in a home in which they don't see love. They don't see the love for the mother, they don't see the love for the father, 
they don't see a sense of compassion within the home. They see all sorts of scenarios of like an attack within a home can be like a battlefield that that one is bad and then when they're not around that one is bad. So imagine then this person's conditioning because everything is based on experiences. You are who you are based on your experiences. Uh, if you were raised with violence, bad character, demeaning character, when a woman disgraces the husband and doesn't treat with Islamic respect, when the man disgraces the woman and doesn't treat with Islamic respect. So you can imagine all of these conditions that people live under. Then they come to Islam, uh, they are like a trained creature with all of their conditions. As soon as they come to Islam they merely accepted Islam but they put that Islam upon who they are, upon the character that they are, on what they perceive men should act like, what they perceive women should act like, uh, how you should treat your children, how you should uh, be to people. So imagine the immense danger in that, that you just put on a dress of Islam onto whatever condition you've been raised in. And then you can see how Islam can be through the whole spectrum and it's not Islam, it's any religion. Anyone trying to come to God based on their human conditioning, well good Lord uh, save us because if you had horrible experiences you come to religion very violent, very angry, very aggressive, very bad talking to men, very bad talking to women, beat people whom are inferior or weaker to you, abuse the children, abuse people. So you just apply these horrific characteristics and you wrap a hijab on or, or put a turban upon those horrible characteristics. Then you can see that that's not Islam, that's not tariqah and that's nothing to do with Allah wanting from the servant. That's why you cannot just come to Islam, come to religion and say, that's it I'm just going to have Qur'an and I'm going to read a few hadiths, one or two maybe you read and I'm going to follow. And what we have in Ahl Sunnah wa Jama'ah, wajib al Wajib al takhleed it's mandatory in Islamic law for Sunni Muslims, not Wahhabis and all, all the other who knows what those groups are, is that you must follow a shaykh and a guide. Why? It's because of the very sickness of your conditioning. We don't know how you were conditioned, what you view, how you view it, what you believe. What do you think a woman should be like? What do you think a man should be like? And how you should treat people, children and community members? So we just explained all of the horrific spectrum of which we have within our own community. So you don't know any of the characteristics of Islam, you merely just accepted the Islamic and Sufi tradition and say, okay now I'm Sufi, I'm, I'm Muslim but you're horrible to your husband. You talk bad, you talk disrespectful and if you read the hadith of what Prophet described for a woman who does not keep the honour of her husband, does not keep the boundary and the rights of her husband, then you'd be scared of really what Islam you're in and, and what you're following. That the guidelines are so strict and what Prophet expects from women, expects from men expects for your relationship with children and the mercy in which you have to raise each other, love each other, honour each other. If you don't play that role and learn Islamic conditioning then your beastly form never submitted. And you fooled yourself mentally thinking that you're in tariqah, you're in Islam, you, you've, you've done something. And that's the danger, that's the danger that we're entering into these Dajjalic energies and people are, are not submitting, their characteristics are not the way that Allah wants.
And that's the problem. So how would a person come to Islam and how would the companions and the holy companions understand rahmah? So how do you understand mercy if your conditioning was very violent, very aggressive from your father, your grandfather, whatever your condition was, how would you understand love and compassion and mercy if you didn't see it at home and you weren't conditioned by that? So that's why, that's why that Islam is not acceptable, that Islam is not real. What Allah wanted in wajib al-takhleed is that the shaykhs whom have been trained by their shaykh, by their shaykh, by their shaykh because the shaykh has a Muhammadan character and as a result of the shaykh accompanying, the student accompanying the shaykh they get to witness the character. And those whom Allah destined to be guides because not everybody watching, tens of thousands of people watching these videos and on rebroadcast, they're not destined to be guides. So they're destined to be students and learn and understand. Those who may be destined to be guides, they do a residency program in which they accompanied the shaykh for decades and as a result they travelled with the shaykh. And they saw the company, they saw the characteristics, they saw the mannerisms and as a result they have a, a deeper understanding of the Muhammadan character. When in Allah describes Prophet as khulqul azim, you have a magnificent character. So when Allah wants that to be inherited, He makes them a student by means of an ability to follow completely the shaykh. Means the rizq, everything has to be prepared in such a way that the student has the ability to accompany the shaykh, travel with the shaykh, live in the proximity of the shaykh. As a result sees the mannerisms in which the person conducts themselves, how they're compassionate, how they're loving, how they're kind, how they're tolerant. And with all of those characteristics they have to be reprogrammed and reconditioned, right? See we don't care for how you saw love in your home and what you thought a father should be and what you thought a mother should be and what you thought children and family should be. But when you accompany the shaykh and all their teachings, their teaching, no, you have to be compassionate. You have to be loving, you have to be caring and in that way because of that example the holy companions now understood rahmah. At that time they didn't understand that what was this concept of mercy. When they came across the rahmah of Allah in the persona of Sayyidina Muhammad they began to understand. So we don't see that in our tribes but what we see of your character we are now beginning to understand Allah's mercy. When we see your compassionate giving, distributing we understand with generosity. So every attribute of Allah is the, the mirror of Allah is Sayyidina Muhammad as a result he reflected and Allah gave every type of life example so that one of the attributes of Allah would reflect towards that reality. So they could understand compassion, they could understand mercy, they could understand love. As a result of that the holy companions understood these characteristics, as a result they adopted these characteristics of khuluqul azim, of a beautific character, beautific nature and those that excelled in that reality they drew their nearness to the love and the muhabbat of Allah So in the mold for us to understand the English of it is when the mold is more complete in the Muhammadan character the servant draws near to Allah 
wherever they are deficient in their Muhammadan character it is keeps them at a proximity to Allah's nearness. There's no character other than Muhammadun Rasulullah right? So it's like a shape, this hand is a character, this Allah what He wants. When it comes like this it meets the khuluq, it meets because Allah says, you are now Muhammadiyun in your character. If you are like this means you're off. And the tariqahs, the responsibility through, teeny, through teaching and training is that your character is not correct. And as a result of that character not being correct, your understanding is not correct and this is limiting you to draw near to Allah And that's the significant importance. That's why this teaching that, that doesn't bring in the character of Prophet is completely fake and false because I gave the example. Bunch of criminals decide they want to enter Islam tomorrow, we can imagine or any religion you can imagine it would be all like gangsters. They would all be violent, they would all be crazy based on their conditioning they merely put upon it uh, Islam. And that's not the correctness, that's not the character. So the, the system of a guide and a shaykh is to teach the servant that conduct yourself as a Muhammadan character. This love, this compassion, this mercy, this good characteristics, all of these and then within their homes the same characteristics that the women should read hadith of the Prophet about how a woman should conduct herself at home with her husband and how she should honour her husband, never disgrace the husband, never publicly humiliate the husband. She has all sorts of guidelines before she thinks that she can enter into paradise. She has to conform to the Muhammadan characteristics which many, 90% are not. And as a result the husbands are all over the place wandering like sheep because they are not respected at home, they are not loved and admired at home. And as a result there is a characteristic in which Allah has made, He has made the woman and made the man. He knows exactly what this man needs to be upright and uphold the Islamic character and the characteristics of Prophet So means if these are not working and these people are not following this system then don't think it's tariqah that broke everything apart and don't think it's Islam that broke everything apart, it's the people. The people break everything apart because they don't change their character, they don't change their hardness, they don't change their misunderstanding. If all your life you didn't see your family together then you would assume that everything in Islam is always separate, you go that room, I go this room. That's not Islamic at all. So whatever you're following has nothing to do with Islam, whatever you understood has nothing to do with Islam. Prophet was very compassionate and very passionate, very loving. So you can read on your own the character and the khuluq of Prophet when it came to his wife and how loving his character was, how soft his character was. And then read about the characteristics of what Prophet described that a woman should have. Not about what the women think they should have but what Prophet described of the characteristics that a woman should have to be from the people of paradise. So the topic tonight was the importance of character and that's why Allah gave to us the example of Sayyidina Muhammad is don't come to me with your own character thinking each one of you individually is great and unique in your own way. Allah doesn't care for that, He cares for the Muhammadan way. I want to see your character in the example of khuluqul adheem, that how much Muhammadiyoon do you have? 
And if you have, you have then the fragrance of that beatific character, the softness of that beatific character, the adab of that beatific character. And it's not perfection because the shaykhs all their life are struggling with this character. How to keep soft, how to keep quiet, how to keep a, a loving demeanor in an ever difficult world of, of all sorts of difficulties and all sorts of different challenges. But their guideline and the post in which they have to continuously reconform is that the example of Sayyidina Muhammad And the shaykhs have a different way is that every time they have to check in and Prophet will give to them their coordinates that you have to be softer, you have to deal on this issue like this, you have to deal on this issue like that. But for the average student they have to rise to that character. That you have to follow the example of the shaykhs, you have to follow the example of Sayyidina Muhammad from what you read and understood of the example of the character, then you follow the example of the shaykhs. And the ulul amr that they were loving, they was a, this is what their style of character, this was this, this was this. When all these variables are in place then everything should have a Divine Barakah. But if the people are disrespectful and disgraceful and, and yelling and screaming, there's no barakah. If there's no barakah in that home everything become like a fire and it become like a jahannam in which people will run. Nobody sits in fire for too long. Some people can walk on fire but only for a given amount of time and they patiently can adhere to that fire. But nobody can just stand on it and cook alive and that's the danger that when somebody continuously makes their house like a fire, a fire, a fire, well there's only people who can walk so long on fire without their entire feet being burned. And that's why then you see people parting ways because somebody in there is like a fire. And if one fire then two fire then three fire. Then the whole place is ablaze and nobody can stay and that becomes then broken situations. So there's a, a remedy for every type of sickness and Islam comes with a perfection of character that is just amazing, amazing insight onto what Prophet asked of what how women conduct themselves and how men conduct themselves. When people adhere to that then they have a, a greater chance of success with the good characteristics. But this sense of fire, this sense of, uh, of uh, horrible characteristics towards one another, then people run from fires and their in, inability to tolerate that difficulty and that's the, the danger of these characteristics that opening within this world. More and more because we said before that the world is on fire now. So if fire outside, fire inside then how are people to survive a situation? Our lives have to be based on an immense sense of love, an immense sense of passion and compassion. And if, if there is love and compassion then the home becomes a cave in which the seeker is a refuge within their home, that the fire should be on the outside with dunya and that they have a home to come to that is a home of peace. And that a, a great dishonour is for someone to use their love as a weapon. When a woman keeps herself away from the husband she's weaponized her love and Without sounding harsh, you can imagine meeting Allah if you've done that. That what will be your response? If it's heaven you believe in, paradise you believe in, Allah that you believe in, we've taught that this whole way is based on love. Then how disgraceful is the one who weaponizes love? Think in every example that you, you use love as a weapon to hurt somebody. That has to be the apex of Allah's anger. You know you can use hate to fight somebody, 
just don't like this person, I'm going to fight them. But to use love and what should be love and compassion and weaponize it that I'm not going to be loving to you, I'm not going to be kind and compassionate to you, I'm not going to fulfill my obligation of love with you is weaponizing. And I've seen horrific images of poor little children, this is a, another example, that just want love. And they go to a parent just seeking love because maybe life is difficult, they're scared. And then imagine the parent just push away. Allah put a love within that creature to come to be nourished. Even a, a dog comes to you out of love, you show respect. Imagine you harm and push away a child. That's weaponizing love, that their natural inclination is to love, to seek a refuge with you, to be safe with you, to be around you and you push it away as if I don't need it. But what you're really saying is that I have a power to bring love and push the love and that's horrific, that's horrific. That we're teaching that Allah's from love, this creation is from love, what Allah wants is from love. And there are people who weaponize love. And when one person all they can give is love to the relationship and they consistently say, no, no, no and distance themselves, you are now in a category of weaponizing love. And judge not for you shall be judged means that you're going to meet Allah with the same character. That imagine if Allah weaponizes love on the Day of Judgment. It's horrific to think like that. But however you're conducting yourself on this earth is exactly how we'll be greeted in the heavens. We went around and used love as a weapon and hurt people, well Allah then going to use love as a weapon when He meets us. So it means the tariqah comes to teach the character that the shaykh never weaponized love, why would you do that? And why are you doing that in your homes and in, in your conditions? Prophet came to teach us muhabbat and good character, love, akhlaq, be smiley, be happy. He said even smile is sadaqah. If you tell people to smile they, they do it in a sarcastic way. Means you don't have an ability to, to give sadaqah from your heart? Then why are all you praying and fasting? Why you don't just quit? Because something of your heart must be dead. That you don't have the ability to smile and to be loving, to be compassionate. This is, this is the whole way of tariqah because when everything fails they come and want to blame Islam. What blame Islam? You didn't follow any of Islam. You followed your own character and you threw upon it a dress of Islam. Now look at the streets and they do the exact same thing. Oh, you're Islam like this, Islam like that. No, you're the same crazy people that you didn't like the king, you threw him out too. So, crazy people are always crazy people, sick people are always sick people. Islam comes to cure people of themselves. Don't bring yourself into Islam, don't bring your up upbringing and what you were conditioned to in Islam. Islam means to destroy yourself, rid yourself of who you are and what you think you've been raised like and come to the way that Allah wants the servant to be. Taslim, taslim means to submit, not submit my bad character and come into Islam but to submit that my character is rotten. My character, I don't know how I've been conditioned on what streets were you conditioned I want to get rid of it and I want to bring the Muhammadan condition within myself so that my human experience is Muhammadiyoon. From my badness bring me the character and the khuluq of Sayyidina Muhammad Ya Rabbi and change me, men and women change me to be a softer, loving, caring person. For when things begin to break people begin to sin. When people begin to sin they begin to fall far from Islam, they start to drift. They no longer honour what they promise to do. If a man can't keep his word and his honour of what he's committed to, 
he's lost himself, he's not worth anything. We pray that Allah dress us, bless us and protect us in an ever more difficult world that the dajjal system is like walking on fire. If you thought holding fire was difficult, now you were walking on fire just to keep everything afloat and to keep things moving in a correct way. We pray that Allah dress us, bless us with the mighty support, Yansurukullahu Nasran Aziza. Ya Rabbi li sharif al-Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam wa alihi wa sahbihi kiram wa ala mashayikhina fi tariqatul nashbandiyatul aliyya wa sayra wa saddatina. As Salaamu Alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Narjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. As Salaamu Alaykum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh.